welcome to the third of my uh, desktop demonstrations. Uh, today I'm going to build one of our Taliclin narrow gauge steel topped open wagons. Uh, the kit comprises of a small etch, a 3D printed plastic chassis and some Allen Gibson wheels. So first of all the wheels just click in place which I have a tendency to do after I've assembled everything. So the first job once you've actually broke up the edge is to punch out all the rivets and then clean up the parts. I sometimes find it easier to actually hold the smaller parts in a pair of pliers while just taking the edge off the burrs with a needle file. This bit's a corner piece which will fit inside the wagon so it needs folding up. I've already folded up and cleaned up the actual body so as I go around cleaning up the parts I actually drop them in the body as it makes a very useful receptacle this bit is the latch at the top of one of the door side doors This is probably one of the most boring parts of model making, just cleaning up etch parts. One of the effects of riveting small pieces of brass is they have a tendency to distort but you don't want to undistort them too much because that would actually flatten the rivet. To my soldering station uh, I'm going to continue by soldering up the top of the tally clean wagon. So to do that first, I'm going to tin up all the individual parts. Now I've got a variable temperature soldering iron and I use this stuff which is safety flux. Uh, I, that's applied with a standard paintbrush. So I'll get my clip. I also like to use these things which are surgical clamps. It saves burning your fingers. So if I just grab that with a clamp, dip it in the, dip the paintbrush in the flux, then bit of solder. That's the first one done. Or it would be if it came off of that. Come on. Off you come. There we go. So I'm going to repeat that for all the rest of the parts. So just grab it there, turn it over. The flux. If you tin up all the parts to start with, it does save you a little bit of time. 
when it comes to the second part of the solder because all you've got to do is sweat them on so that's another bit done it's quite quick So we just continue doing this until we've got rid of all the bits which need to know and then we'll start with the actual construction. So we've tinned up all the parts. We now need to tack the corner plates in place. Um, these are the first ones to be done are the ones which don't have the corner plates in them. So I've put some solder flux in there and about five millimeters of solder. And I'm going to use the resistance solder machine. So now we take the bottom strapping piece and that needs a little bit of trimming off so we'll trim that off. So we've got the bottom piece of strapping in place and again give it a quick blast with the resistance solder machine and then go to the ends and do exactly the same and that's that one in. Next, we're going to take a corner piece, pop that in there, put some more flux on, this is where the resistance solder machine comes into its own, so we'll just give it a quick blast. that one in. A bit more solder flux on the inside of that. Second corner piece. Sometimes it's usually useful to have a cocktail stick. Never underestimate the usefulness of a cocktail stick. Again, Last. That's that one in. these side bits on, these need a little bit of trim try not to distort them
again. Plenty of flux. I'm going to pick that for the other side. With the next bit, it's a bit more tricky because these actually uh, have a distinct side to them. There is actually a half inch line towards the end, and that is so you can line up the next bit on top. So, with this one being quite small and tricky, I'm going to use some of these miniature pegs for my linsing pouring. seem to work very well as long as the camera isn't actually rolling. So again, lots of flux. This water flux is water, this safety flux is water soluble so it washes off with a bit of soap and water. Again, that one done. Turn the next one on there, outside there, then on with the pegs. Always it would be if I get my fingers And again, that's that bit on. Now, so the re re reinforcing plate. Pegs. Some flux. shifted So there are now just three more parts to fit. So these little one, these little tags need folding up. And again, fold them up into the half edge line.
and using your surgical clamp to grab the end bit of flux This is where a steady hand really comes and pays off. And today I do not have a steady hand. Let's try this a different route. Got ya. So that's now fixed in place. I can just same again on this side. Sometimes the pliers come in handy for another purpose. Again, that's held there. We just bring the iron in. And that's that soldered on. So there's only the one more thing to solder on now. And then this can go and get washed. So where's our last piece? Our last piece there. And that goes across. And that's the top of the wagon done. Welcome back to the uh, assembly area. Uh, in the meantime, I've actually glued the chassis onto the actual uh, box that we sold up earlier. And I've added the two retaining plates, which, if my fingers get out of the way, uh, there and there, which overlap the buffer beam and the box. In reality, they hold the bottom of the door on they go on the end which has got the tags on right so the last thing to do with this is fit the wheels so these very simple no bearings required because of the material you just literally bend the chassis out of the way slightly and is that the plan and there we go and they're in They'll need regaging to the right gauge. And the last one to go in. Oh yeah, that's all we need now is paint and the couplings. Right. So in true blue peat style, here's one I made earlier. Uh, let's paint it up. So the last thing to do with this one is to install the couplings. Now as I said before, the kits come with a standard coupling for the Teleclin, but it's not really good for actual modelling and playing with. So I use these things, which are, I don't know if you can see there because they're quite small, uh, Greenwich Model Railway Club couplings. Now, 
they're supposed to be bio-directional but I never really found that to work so I actually have one end with the loop on and one end without the loop on so to fit them it's very straightforward just straight in the hole and as you can see it pokes through the back so you just need to secure that in a position where the loop can operate so you have to just bring it out slightly so that's that there and then once you're happy it's a case of a blob of super glue on the back to secure it so the couplings themselves come on a nice little etch fret I'm just trying to make sure you can actually see that because black on black doesn't really work so there you are, that's a little threat. And they're actually made with two key parts. One is the centre buffer coupling part. You can never grab one when you want one. That's again, you can see it against my hand. They're not very big. They're actually designed for 009 and so they're not very uh, obvious when you actually use them. Very easy to uh, do. There's a couple of half inch lines and then you just fold them down on a half inch line and back on themselves. So that gives you a very hard to actually see this. If I put that on my hand, that might be better. You can see just see it there. That's how small they are. So you fold that back on itself, and then there's some little lugs which if you're building the one with the, the end with the loop, you fold down and put the pin through. And then you just fold back the actual centre buffer. So it doesn't lock when you're coupling it. And that's it. So that goes in the other end of the wagon. As tight up as possible. And that's the completed wagon. Thank you very much for watching.